let's take a little closer look at activating units and how it's done. Now, basically, one thing to, to keep in mind is that there is this idea of combat groups. And what this is, is it's basically six or less uh, sections of troops, whether they're tanks or infantry or jeeps or trans, whatever. The, the max is six of these sections that can be in a combat group. Now, it's pretty much based on a platoon-sized organization. They can be combined arms. You could have tanks activating with infantry at once, or all infantry, or it could be just a single section, like a single squad of infantry, if you want. That's what defines a command group. Now, if one of those sections is not a platoon commander base, which this is right here in this case, uh, the maximum is five sections that you can include in the combat group. Uh, it's something to keep in mind. Now, there is a special rule for human waves that allow it to be quite large, these sections. And that's usually associated with the Russians who are able to do that. But normally it's maxed at six or five if there's no platoon section, command section in the command, the combat group. So let's look at an example. Now, in this case, uh, what I want to do during the turn is I want to activate this LNG squad, this infantry squad, this jeep, and this tank section as well. So that's one, two, three, four sections that I can include in this uh, combat group. Now, unfortunately, there's no platoon commander involved here. Because he's not one of the uh, sections involved here. So what that means is I have to pick one of these sections to be a kind of a temporary command section. It's called a lead section in the rules. Uh, it's okay to do that. So you don't always need to have a platoon section, command section, in the activation. Some RNAs are required for certain functions in the game, so it's kind of important for that. Uh, but normally you, you don't really need it. Now, in this case, I would just pick one of these sections to be the lead command section. It's a temporary thing. And for instance, I could choose the Jeep. Now, what you do next is once you've decided where your command section is, everybody within four inches, in this case, can be activated uh, or included in the combat group. And in this case, the distance is four inches. And the reason for that is because it's a combined arms uh, com combat group. There's infantry and there is an AFV, the Sherman tank and the maximum distance is four. If these were all tanks, it would be much greater. If they were tanks that had radios, it would be 12 inches. If they were radi radioless AFVs, it would be six inches. So that kind of thing. Uh, but with infantry, guns, and uh, combined arms, combat groups, it's maxed at four. So let's just double check our range here to the Jeep. And yeah, four inches, and these of course are in command range. So this is a legal combat group that I can activate together at, with one die roll. Now the next thing you want to look at is, is this combat group uh, within HQ contact distance? Now normally that's eight inches away from your company HQ. Now we have a company HQ located up here. You can see him hunkering down in the building. Now if he's eight inches or less away from the command section of this group, that's the one you measure to, uh, they are an HQ contact. And if I look at it, yeah, it's just about seven inches. So this combat group can activate without any further um, requirements because it's in HQ contact. Now, let's say for the sake of example, this HQ, this company HQ, was way back here. Now, he's obviously further than eight inches from the command section here of this group. In that situation, this group is considered out of HQ contact. They're not in contact with the company headquarters, too far away. And when this happens, in order to activate this combat group, you're required to pay uh, one impetus to do so. So this is gonna cost an impetus point for me to attempt to activate them. And I might fail the roll and waste an impetus point just trying to activate them. Uh, but that's not the case in this situation. That's basically how that works. Uh, second thing to keep in mind here 
is if you roll your activation, normally it's a seven plus. It's across the board, you need a seven plus to activate any group. Uh, if you roll a five or a six, it's called a hesitant result. In other words, they might still activate. Uh, it's still possible, and it's called a hesitant result. And what you do when you get that result is you are allowed to add impetus points to the die roll to make it a seven and therefore activate the group. If you roll less than five or six, if you roll a four, it's called a command confusion and you definitely don't activate the unit. There's just, just no time to do it. They don't do it. Uh, but otherwise you can add impetus points to make it a seven. And that's with a hesitant result. So it's basically one or two points of impetus that you're going to add. Now, that's important because not all armies are capable of doing that. Um, for instance, let's look at the Americans. This is a scenario in 1944. Now, the Americans during this period, they can add impetus points to get that activation score to seven only if they have a platoon commander or a company HQ that is activating with this group. And in this example, that's not the case. This is just a recon jeep. It's not a platoon HQ, and it's certainly not the company HQ, which is way over here. These guys are activating without a platoon commander, in other words. Um, so, the only other way I could add impetus to a failed roll for these guys is if the company HQ himself was within contact with this group, which we measured eight inches away from the Jeep, it is. So for Americans during this period, they can, in this situation, add impetus to get a good result. And again, if he was not within eight inches, um, I would be required to activate for, with a, I'd have to spend an impetus point to even attempt to activate, we covered that. But also, if I fail the roll on a five or six, I can't, in this case, use impetus to activate them, to add to my score to make seven, in other words. I couldn't do it in this case. Uh, if this was a platoon commander instead, I could add impetus. Even if, the, even if the company commander was way back here and not in contact with them, I could still add impetus. That's unique to the Americans of this period. You know, They're quite versatile on this level. Uh, another example would be Germans of the same time period, 1944. Uh, their situation, they can always add impetus if, with a failed roll of a five or a six, regardless if this was a platoon commander or not. They always have that option. They're very versatile tactically on the field. Of course, to activate, they would still have to pay the extra point of impetus if their headquarters, their company HQ, wasn't within distance of their uh, lead section. So that's the basics of activation. There's a little bit more to it and you get involved with vehicles and some other nationalities, but that's the basics of it.